ADO dot net is mainly used to access the data. Okay, that's the most important point that you need to observe here. ADO was built on com based application is what you need to remember. So this is the most important point. Why do I use command object? If you want to execute any queries, so you will be using the command object. This object will help me to execute my set of queries, whatever I have. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session in the .NET programming. So guys, in today's topic, I will be discussing ADO.NET. So what exactly ADO.NET is all about, all of you would have uh, heard about it, right? So yes, if you have not heard about it, I think you are in the right place. So guys, let me just tell you what exactly that I'm going to discuss in this session with all of you. I will be discussing three important topics in this session. So that's going to be on ADO.NET architecture and the second one, why do I need ADO.NET and along with that different objects that I have in the ADO.NET. This is going to be the three contents which I'm going to discuss with all of you in today's session. So yes, let's take a quick look uh, with respect to the ADO.NET architecture. Of course, you don't have this in your syllabus, but it's very important that we need to take a quick look with respect to the architecture to understand the concept of ADO.NET. So guys, where exactly we are using the ADO.NET? So let's take a quick look. So yes, we have studied uh, Windows form, web form and other things. So we call this as a front end. So we have already seen all this front end tools. And also we have uh, data source, we have uh, discussed now. We have studied DBMS, we have studied SQL, all those stuffs we have studied. But how exactly I will be able to access the data? So from the back end to the front end. So how exactly am I? accessing so that's a question so guys this question will be answered with the technology called ADO.NET we have something called ADO and also we have something called ADO.NET so now let's understand how exactly ADO is different from ADO.NET so mainly hope you understood ADO.NET is mainly used to access the data okay that's the most important point that you need to observe here so fine let's take a quick look this we also call it as a need of ADO.NET and also we compare the concept of ADO, all right? So there are the two important different things that we have. When it comes to the ADO, so it does not process the XML data. So that's the most important point that you need to remember. But when it comes to ADO.NET, it efficiently performs the XML data is what you need to remember. But when it comes to the second point, so guys, it cannot combine data which is contained in a multiple different sources when it comes to the ADO, but when it comes to the ADO.NET, so it will overcome from that drawback is what you need to remember. And also the changes, whatever you need to perform, the updates, whatever you need to perform. So automatically, very comfortably, very easily, efficiently, you can do it with respect to the ADO.NET, but not in ADO is what you need to remember. And also the most important point that you need to remember is ADO was built on com based application is what you need to remember. So this is the most important point that you need to remember before we move on to the next topic. All right, so fine. Guys, as I told you, why do we need this ADO.NET? So guys, ADO.NET consists of set of objects, which I'm going to discuss one by one. So that's what you need to remember. ADO.NET is consists of set of objects that expose the data access service. So that's what you need to remember. If I want to access the data, I will be using the technology called ADO.NET is what you need to remember. So fine, what is the namespace that I will be using with respect to the ADO.NET? So guys, system.data is the namespace mainly I will be using here is what you need to remember. So you said a set of objects, what are the set of objects that we will be using in the ADO.NET? Could you please tell me that? Yes, I'll be discussing that quickly one by one. So guys, uh, I have two important things before I start with my objects. So that's going to be the data provider and also I have data set. What exactly this data provider and data set that I need to understand? Yes, let's take a look. So guys, the two key important points with respect to the ADO.NET is data provider and a data set. So let's check and understand one by one. So when it comes to the data provider, it's a collection of special classes Observe here, it's a collection of special classes designed to do what? So designed to allow you to communicate with a particular type of data store. So if you want to communicate with a particular data store, I will be using the concept called data provider. But when it comes to the data set, so all your data will be placed in one particular place. So that's what I will call it as a data set. 
So I've taken the result. Where do I keep it? So I will be keeping that in the data set is what you need to remember. If I want to communicate with anybody, I have to use data provider. If I want to keep my data, whatever the result that I've got from the data source, I will be keeping that in the data set is what you need to remember. So fine, moving forward to the next one that we have connection. It helps me to establish the connection is what you need to remember. So between what? So let's check that. So guys, the connection object provides a physical connection to a data source. That's our most important point that you need to remember. It establishes the physical connection between the data source is what you need to remember. That's why we use the connection object. All right, so without connection object, can I establish the connection, sir? No, it is not possible is what you need to remember. The next one. Command object. Why do I use command object? If you want to execute any queries, so you will be using the command object. This object will help me to execute my set of queries, whatever I have. So that's the most important point that you need to remember. The next one that we have is all about data adapter. My dear students, data adapter is just like a bridge. So bridge between what? So observe bridge between the two important things. That's going to be the disconnected data set object okay so we have something called disconnected data object and also we will have the content called physical data source so between these two it will create the bridge is what you need to remember it acts as a bridge between these two important things that's what i will call it as a data adapter and finally i have data set which i've already told you all your data in the form of rows and columns and tables all the things whatever the resultant that you have so you will be keeping that in the data set. These terminology you have to remember that's very important and I'll also show you how exactly the create you know, update delete insert queries will work you know in the edio.net in the coming classes. Along with that I'll also show you how exactly we can create the data set in the next session. Till then take care bye bye.